Hey, we are back on the M18, and we have just replaced the valve guide in the previous video. And since all the other valve guides are pretty, pretty good enough, goodish, we're going to adjust valve clearances. And so let me pull you off the stand and show you. So we've got the cylinder jugs bolted up to the case so that we can check... Uh, we can check the clearance between the valve and the lifter here. So this is an intake valve. Here's an exhaust valve. And what I've done uh, for clarity is just mark each one and what I had found. So on the opposite cylinder, we had an exhaust clearance of 12 thousandths, which is in spec, and an intake of 5 thousandths. So that little check mark means they're good. We're good to go. You can see the new valve guide on that exhaust. Uh, on this side, our exhaust valve is at five thousandths of clearance between the stem and the lifter, which is no good. So it doesn't get a check mark. This one has a check mark. It's at five thousandths, which is good. Again, our clearances for the intake should be between three and six, and on the exhaust should be eleven to fourteen. This does depend on the serial number of the engine, so double check that. They changed uh, the valve angle. I think they changed the valve seat angle on some of these, so yeah. So pretty simple stuff, um, but we have to have the jugs bolted on and we have to check all this stuff all at once. And then the process will be, um, we'll grind this valve stem until we achieve the clearance that we want. After we achieve that clearance, the cylinder barrels will come back off. We'll clean everything up and install the valves for good and install the pistons and then we'll slide the assemblies back into the case. But in uh, this video we're just going to go over the valve clearance. Uh, there is no adjustable lifter assembly on these so if yours is out of spec like this one is then it's Time to grind. So this is the exhaust valve that we're gonna be working with. I've got a piston ring filer over here. I've scribed a perpendicular line to the, uh, to the wheel, just to give myself a secondary reference for getting this, uh, for grinding the stem properly. You know, I don't wanna grind it at an angle, so it's got a weird cant to it, so. We were at five thousandths here. I'll go over checking it once. It's pretty standard stuff, but if you've never done one before, it's I think it's good to show it at least once. We'll be checking it throughout the video. So we're gonna check it right now. I've actually got a six to eight right now because I've done a little bit of work on the valve. Yeah, it's a six to eight. So this is like a go no go type feeler gauge where the very tip is at six. And then this larger section is at eight. So cylinder is at top dead center on the compression stroke. I keep saying cylinder. Piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke. So when we rotate this, you can see there's no movement. Nothing's moving these valves either open off their seat or in any other fashion. I'm just eyeballing the uh, the rod that's on this side and watching for it to move. You can actually will probably watch my hand. Yeah, see my hand move? So my hand's connected to the end of the rod. I'm gonna move up to top dead center, which is right about there. And it'll start going back down again. Don't want it there. Rotate back a little bit more to your white right in the, the dwell between uh, the up and down. So right there. That means both of these valves are definitely closed. It's not the only way to do it. It's not the only place in the cycle that you're gonna have a closed exhaust valve, but it's common procedure to do it this way. It's not even necessarily the easiest, but it's the way I'm gonna show it. Um, so now that we've got it in there, obviously we don't have a valve spring to squeeze this area here so we got to push with our thumb 
and you squeeze right here like that and check in here. So six goes. Eight. And rotate the valve a little bit, make sure you get a good Yep, six is loose, eight, a little bit of resistance. So and you want to make sure you rotate the valve a little bit too, just to make sure you're getting a good even contact there. You don't have any debris under the seat. So we're between six and eight. We're probably roughly seven now. We started at five. So we got a ways to go. I'm going to creep up on this measurement. I'm not going to run it all the way up until I hit, you know, 14 thousandths and then check it. We're going to do it in stages. And another reason to do it in stages, at least the way that I'm doing it, is because the surface of the grinding surface on that wheel is not very nice and then got some burrs and stuff on it so I always got to clean it up a little bit after I pull it off of that piston ring filer you see the score marks and I got to clean those up a little bit so that's going to change the clearance every time I do it so okay time for some grindy grind what do you think Bart? grindy grind Can you like that burger? What do you want? What do you want? Okay. So took some chunks out of that you can see the surface is stanky it's all burry and weird I don't want to shove this valve stem into the guide with any kind of burrs even on the chamfer I don't want to put, put it in there like that so take a piece of sandpaper and give it a little ugh, give it a little twist I'm not gonna do this over the motor I don't want to drop stuff in there but you get the idea All right, burrs are removed from the chamfer. Now you still got a little bit of a coarseness to this, but that's okay. Once we get close enough to the actual measurement, I'll do some more fine, fine grinding. Oh, forgot. Take a little rag, wipe this thing. I'm gonna keep doing that just to make sure I don't get grit on the. Uh, on the valve stem. I just got like some WD-40 on this rag here just to clean the valve stem up so it doesn't throw a bunch of debris into the guide. Alright, here's our 6 to 8. We haven't changed that, so we'll try that again. Ooh! What happened there, eh? I'm sure we're still on... It looks like it's a lot more clearance than I expected. And we're still there. We're still at top bed center. Okay. That's fine. Well, that looks like a lot more than six to eight, though, doesn't it? Okay, so the eight just goes right through it now. Let's go for the seven to nine. Let's see where we're at. I think we're probably, probably about nine thousand, but we'll see. 9 to 10. So here's a here's a 7 to 9. Rotate the valve a little bit. Yeah, we're probably about 9. It's close to it enough. Once we get to about 11, I'll start doing some fine grinding here and get the scores out because that will change it a little bit, like I said. So let's give it one more, one more go around on the wheel here. Can you see that on the camera when I'm 
grinding that. Yes, you can see that. Okay, good. So I'm just keeping even pressure down here and keeping even pressure this way and then kind of steadying it with my other finger just to try to keep it. And since this wheel is so abrasive, I'm not putting a lot of pressure into the valve stem to cut it. I'm just trying to just give it enough pressure to cut, but not, not gouge it. Uh, give it another Sanderson. I'm gonna go a little more aggressive on the uh, on the sand for this one because I think we're probably gonna be getting close soon to the measurement. Oh, it's sitting down. I'm gonna do it here, nice flat bed. scoring what grid is this? this is like a this is like a 220 i think maybe it's not it's definitely not fine but it's not super coarse either well, we'll check this i still have a couple little score marks in it but Yeah, you can see a couple little score marks, but it's not too bad. Just want to creep it up, creep up on the measurement. One of the only times in life you're allowed to be a creep. All right, our nine thou is just sliding right through. I'll rotate the valve a little bit, make sure it's even. Yeah. Nine is just whew, right through. So that's our seven to nine. Let's do our 10 to 12. We're getting a little tight on a 10 and a 12 won't fit. Grab that again. Yep. I think we're right at the 11 mark. Yep. So I think we're probably right about 11 thou. So we'll do a fine pass over here. One more real fine pass just to graze a little bit of extra material off. And then we'll hit the rest with the sandpaper. And that should get us to the 12 thousandths that we need. I'll just do it standing up. It's easier to see. on there 
Just buzzed some of it off. Let's uh let's sand it down now and get it nice and smooth, and I think that'll put us pretty near where we want to be. I'm just gonna use a little bit of lubricant there to keep the sand or keep the uh, sandpaper from loading up. I'd like to find a different wheel for this, so I don't have to try to do this section by hand because this is kind of stupid. Because it's impossible to keep it like perfectly flat, you know. And the exhaust valve will rotate, so it's not going to... They got little rotators, so it's going to move a little bit from this, from any orientation you put it in. So it's not like you can count on your valve clearance. If your valve clearance is a little bit off because you cut it wrong, it'll get better or worse depending on how it rotates in the guide. All right, we're almost there. We got some, we got some dudes there. We got to do something about it. We'll do a little bit more and then we'll check it. I'm just using this as a flat surface to try to keep the stem keep whatever I'm doing somewhat perpendicular to the stem Pretty good. And drag my fingernail through any of them. And eh, not really. I think that's fine. If it's not, we'll take a little more off because we got room to go. Okay. So here's the surface of the valve now. Looks pretty good. Got a couple scratches in it, but like I said, we'll take some off if we need to. We still got a ways to go. All right. So this is our 10 to 12. I'm gonna squeeze the valve in there and see what we get. Ooh. 12 is not quite ready to go through yet. Might be a little tight. Still a little tight. I think that last step maybe took a half a thou off, not quite a full. So, yeah, I think we need to give her a little bit more. That's fine. I'd actually prefer to change this uh, contact pattern a little bit. So, back to the sandy sand. starting to feel nice. It's starting to feel real nice. Let's get that chamfer cleaned up too. And we'll take it over the wire wheel after this too and polish it a little bit. We'll be good to go. Happy little valve. I doubt we've taken another half thou off yet. Let's give it another couple rounds of this. I don't know how this particular valve was so far out. All the other ones are fine. And I didn't cut that much out of the... Actually, it didn't change that much from the beginning. Like, I was thinking, oh, maybe I just took too much out of the seat or too much out of the valve face when I uh, lapped them, but... This one really didn't change. 
from the original measurement. And that's about where it was when I opened it up. I think it's like a half thou difference. That's pretty clean, and that's about the kind of surface. That's a like surface finish. I'll probably that's the best surface finish I'll get with that sandpaper anyway. So, nice and smooth all around, really. So let's see what we get. Here's our 10 to 12. Ooh. Nope, not quite. I mean, I can get it to go if I push it, but I really got to push it hard. I mean, there, there's a, there's, it, I'm not saying press hard, I guess what I mean is, I, I, it requires too much pressure to pull the gauge in and out. And it should be touching, it should grab it, but not be that tight. So, we're still a bit out. I think I'll probably touch it with the, uh, touch it with the stone one more time. Because I could be here forever getting a half thou out with that sandpaper so let's touch it one more time here since it's an exhaust valve you know i'm going to err on the side of it being a little loose rather than a little tight so i don't want to be right at the margin at the very end of the spec This is an exhaust valve, it's gonna get hot, you know, it's better that it has more clearance than less, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So Should be plenty. Plenty. Okay, we are going to sand this down some more, get it nice and smooth, take it over to the wire, wire wheel, put it in, and check it again. And um, then we'll be back. All right. Let's take a look at what we've got here. I've taken this off and cleaned it uh, on a wire wheel. And now I've set it back into the guide and checked it again for its final measurement. And we're getting, this is a 12 to 14 gauge here. Yeah, 12 to 14. And 12 goes through. 14 grabs a little. Rotate the valve, 12 goes through, 14 grabs just a little. So we went a little further than we wanted to on this side. I would have preferred to have been in the 12, 13 range, but that's okay. We're still in spec. I am now going to rotate the cylinder. Rotate the cylinder. Why do I keep saying that? Rotate the crank in the opposite direction. And we'll check the other side to make sure. We're doing the same thing on both sides. 
That's the intake valve opening right now. Okay. So keep rotating. You can see now the intake valve is closed. We're coming back up. You can watch my hand move. Coming back up. Come back up. And we're at the top. Rotate past it. Come back. So right about there. Helps if you hold the valve, doesn't it? There's a 12 to 14. 14 is a little tighter on this side. It'll go, but it tries to push the valve up. So that's why I wrote 13 on this side. So after I polished it, it went a little closer to the other side of the spec. Again, our specs are 11 to 14 for the exhaust, so we're still good. Better a little loose on the exhaust than a little tight. And it's not a race car, so we're going to call that good enough. All right. In the next video, we will pull the cylinder barrels off, fully populate them with the valves, seals, um, and then clean them up and get them all ready for reassembly, including inserting the pistons and putting everything back into the case. So we'll see you guys soon.